Thank you very much for the introduction. Uh, this, uh, this presentation concerns the, uh, the description of a system which uh, allows for uh, the arithmetic computations to be performed directly over encrypted data. The real world use case involves that the medical data is uh, collected from the enrolled patients. Uh, they are uh, transported to the backend components where they are processed. So the arithmetic computations are conducted directly over the encrypted data. And uh, they are also stored in a secure fashion and um, the decryption occurs only at uh, the client side when uh, the patient requests uh, some medical information. So just a few words about myself. I am an associate professor at uh, the Transylvania University of Brasov. Uh, in this capacity, I conduct uh, various uh, didactic and uh, research-oriented activities. And uh, I am also uh, a researcher with uh, Siemens Industry Software in, uh, in Brasov, in the Department of Research and Technology. And I also conduct uh, research projects uh, with business-oriented uh, value. Just a little bit of uh, mathematical background before uh, jumping uh, into the presentation of the use case. Um, we should be able to uh, make uh, computations directly over the encrypted data. And uh, in this respect, uh, we use uh, two logical uh, gates. It's uh, AND and uh, exclusive OR as you see here. So uh, the exclusive OR is the gate which is uh, being used for the sum and uh, the end is being used for the product. And uh, the reason behind this uh, is clearly visible here. And uh, we, we can say that uh, the system that is made uh, up of uh, the end and uh, exclusive OR gates is uh, Turing complete because we can perform any kind of uh, arithmetic uh, operation using only these two gates. Um, the, the whole idea is based uh, on the concept of uh, fully homomorphic encryption. Historically, the concept uh, has been introduced uh, in the scientific literature uh, by uh, a researcher that is uh, named uh, Gentry in uh, 2008 uh, where he um, presented it uh, in his uh, PhD thesis. And uh, a fully homomorphic encryption system is uh, capable of uh, conducting uh, any number of uh, additions and multiplication. Okay, so I'll uh, jump uh, over some of the slides that uh, may not be interesting uh, for, uh, for this uh, particular stage of the presentation. And uh, I'll uh, start uh, by uh, talking about uh, the me mechanism which is behind the symmetric encryption. So, uh, in order to define uh, the symmetric encryption model, uh, let us uh, consider uh, our secret key as a very large odd number that is uh, uh, designated uh, by P. Then, in order to encrypt uh, a certain uh, bit B, uh, we choose a pre preferably random large multiple of P, so we get uh, Q times P. Then we choose a preferably small number, uh, which is uh, called the noise in the context of our discussion, which is uh, two times R plus B. And this noise is very uh, relevant in our discussion because uh, it is important to keep it at a proper level, as otherwise 
it would be impossible to decrypt the bits and uh, therefore the fully homomorphic encryption computations would uh, output an incorrect bit and would not work at all. So uh, uh, one of the main uh, tasks in uh, implementing a system like uh, the one that is described in this presentation is to keep the level of the noise under control. And uh, there are several uh, techniques in this respect. Uh, one of the most uh, used uh, techniques is uh, re referred as the bootstrapping method. So, why, why is this important? Because in a kind of an exclusive OR operation, which, uh, which implement the, uh, the addition operation, you, you see that the noise is relatively small from a quantitative uh, perspective. But if uh, we apply uh, an end operation, so if we perform a multiplication, the size of the noise, which is Does not work. You have to hold it. Okay, so this is the noise, and uh, we we see that uh, is it is uh, sensibly larger than uh, what uh, the the addition operation would uh, produce. So. Uh, in order to uh, keep the noise under control, several solutions have been uh, proposed, and uh, the most uh, well-known one is uh, called as uh, the bootstrapping method. Uh, what does the bootstrapping method say? Um, we um, establish a predefined threshold, and uh, if uh, the uh, size of the noise goes beyond that threshold, we should uh, apply certain uh, arithmetic methods in order to decrease the respective value. And uh, we'll see in a moment how we implemented this in our uh, real world use case uh, scenario. And uh, usually the threshold uh, is uh, uh, set as uh, uh, half of uh, the value of the uh, ciphertext, but of course, in uh, real-world settings, this can take uh, other values as well. And uh, I'll uh, jump over to the presentation of, uh, of the use case so that you can understand better what this is all about. Okay, so uh, the use case is uh, reported uh, mainly in two, two, two papers. The first one, which describes uh, the initial uh, version of the system, has been published in 2018. And uh, the second one, which uh, describes an updated version of the system, has been published uh, this year, as you, as you see here. And um, it uh, considers the following use case. There are uh, 750 patients that are uh, citizens of, uh, of Brasov uh, city in Romania. And uh, each of uh, the enrolled patients is uh, uh, fitted with a, a Polar H10 wearable device which is essentially measures their cardiac rhythm uh, data. And uh, the data is being uh, transmitted um, using a Bluetooth connection to their uh, mobile phones, and the mobile phone sends it over to the uh, backend components for further processing. And the data processing occurs directly over the encrypted data, which uh, uh, 
practically avert any uh, attempt to uh, tamper with the data or to, to read it. Even if a hacker got access to the system, he would uh, not uh, be able to uh, use it in any useful uh, way. Okay, so uh, in order to uh, transfer the data, we use uh, virtualized uh, 5G data channels. And uh, the 5G data channels are defined uh, uh, using uh, the virtual network function uh, model, as it is known in the literature. Uh, in essence, this means that uh, instead of uh, uh, using uh, hardware components for every uh, level of the 5G network, we simply use a certain uh, virtualization model and uh, most of uh, these hardware components are uh, defined by uh, software routines. Okay, so um, in order to uh, specify and implement the 5G virtual channels, we have used uh, the Ericsson uh, network uh, function virtualization infrastructure. And uh, as you can see uh, uh, here, the, uh, the first stage pertains to the data acquisition, as uh, I told you, using uh, the acquisition me method that I described. Then the second stage referred to the data transmission to the backend components. Uh, the backend components for our use case are uh, being deployed into uh, the uh, IBM uh, cloud infrastructure, but uh, of course it can be deployed to any other uh, cloud, uh, modern cloud uh, infrastructure. Okay, uh, the third stage, it's uh, the, the actual storage of, of the collected data, and of course we also have uh, data processing. Uh, we'll see in a moment uh, how data is being uh, processed in a homomorphic encryption uh, manner. We see here a, a general schema of the system. You see that uh, there are uh, basically uh, two data paths. When uh, we deal with uh, the transmission of uh, system state data, we use uh, a standard, uh, standardly encrypted uh, data channel. And when we should deal with uh, uh, personal uh, data, we use the fully homomorphic encryption routines. Uh, why is this? Because um, the fully homomorphic encryption routines are very time expensive. Okay. Uh, so what what are the basic operation that the system supports? The first operation is the homomorphic addition. We've already understood how uh, this is implemented. Then we deal uh, with the homomorphic uh, multiplications and uh, the implementation is uh, done using uh, an uh, end gate. Uh, then we have the homomorphic rotate as uh, the name implies, uh, it uh, rotates the data bits at uh, some moment during the data processing uh, stages. Then is the homomorphic uh, uh, cell mask operation, which uh, has the role to correct the bits that may become altered during the computation. Then uh, very important is this level because this level is uh, how uh, the threshold is being defined. Um, one uh, multiplication operation basically increments with uh, one the value of this level. And uh, we uh, established a certain uh, threshold for the value of the level. And uh, this uh, threshold was uh, determined uh, through successive experimental uh, assessments. And uh, uh, 
we have uh, made sure that uh, any homomorphic operation is being uh, conducted uh, correctly. Okay. And then we have uh, another uh, important parameter, which is uh, the number of the ciphertexts, which is uh, this uh, NCT that you can see here. And uh, uh, let's see what, uh, what follows. Uh, here is a general uh, uh, architectural model of the system, which uh, suggests how the operations are being performed uh, computationally wise. And um, we have used our system and the collected data in order to uh, detect and uh, assess uh, three medical parameters and conditions. Uh, just as a, an additional remark, which is not particularly important for the fully homomorphic encryption, is that we have also included some uh, and true uh, homomorphic uh, mechanisms apart from the st standard fully homomorphic encryption ones. Uh, this was done in order to uh, speed up the computation as much as, uh, as possible. Okay, so the, the slides that I jumped over uh, have, always, have already been presented, uh, so uh, there's no need to insist on them. So what are the three medical parameters and conditions which uh, this system considers? Uh, uh, first is uh, the average uh, heart rate, which is uh, determined out of the data that is uh, uh, collected by uh, the Polar H10 sensors. Then there is the delayed repolarization of the heart. This is a heart medical condition, which is uh, uh, generated by uh, an abnormal uh, influx of uh, the electrical signals that uh, flow through the heart. And uh, this uh, abnormal condition may determine for the oxygenated blood to mix up with uh, non-oxygenated blood. And uh, the last one are the minimum and uh, the maximum heart, heart rates. Just some uh, brief remarks about uh, each of these uh, conditions and uh, how they were, uh, they were implemented. The, the computation of the average heart rate is based on the storage uh, of uh, the encrypted values using uh, those uh, NCT uh, ciphertexts that uh, have been mentioned. And uh, in, uh, in essence, we uh, uh, perform a homomorphic uh, addition and uh, then uh, we divide it by uh, the number of uh, the values that have been collected during a certain period of time. Uh, Client-wise, uh, the client is uh, being represented uh, by an Android application. And uh, when uh, the user requests the average heart value, he uh, specifies a certain uh, time interval. And uh, in a certain time interval, there is a number of uh, ciphertexts that have been collected. Okay, so uh, the, the de detection of uh, the delayed uh, repolarization of the heart syndrome uh, considers a certain time interval in this uh, example, uh, we speak about uh, 475 milliseconds. The, the parameters that you see here, mainly TQT and uh, TRR, are uh, standard uh, medical uh, parameters or physiological parameters that are generated by any electrocardiogram uh, test. And uh, the value of uh, 475 milliseconds 
has been uh, uh, tweaked up and fine-tuned through successive uh, experimental evaluations so that uh, the detection rate uh, became uh, uh, had a high uh, enough uh, level of the accuracy. And uh, the last uh, medical condition, we speak about uh, the minimum and the maximum uh, heart rates. The, the principle here uh, is to uh, convert the data in a binary format. This uh, data in a binary format is being uh, compared uh, bitwise in a homomorphic uh, manner. And uh, if the first number is greater than the other number, then the result will uh, include a single bit of one. If the, the number is not greater, then uh, uh, it uh, will have uh, the opposite uh, situation. And uh, this is how we implement uh, a comparison directly over the encrypted data. And uh, we are able to determine the minimum heart rate and the maximum heart, heart rates. Okay. So uh, uh, the system currently uh, supports Android-based client uh, devices, but uh, it can certainly be extended uh, to any type of uh, mobile-oriented uh, uh, client device. And uh, the study population, as uh, I've already mentioned, is uh, composed of uh, 750 uh, enrolled, uh, let's call them patients, although they are not like proper patients. And uh, the data uh, collection device is a Polar H10, uh, H10 device. I, I described uh, how uh, the data stream uh, is being uh, uh, configured while the, the data collected by the polars are being sent to the mobile phones, which in turn send them to the background components, which perform all, all the computations. Uh, the encryption occurs directly on the client device, so it's being sent over, uh, over the 5G data channels in an encrypted form. The computations and uh, data storage is also done in an encrypted format, and uh, when the client, so the patient, requests some medical information, the encrypted uh, data is uh, sent back, the, um, and the client devices uses uh, the keys that are stored for uh, any data requests in part, and uh, this is able to decrypt the data only on the client device. The performance evaluation has uh, considered uh, several parameters. The um, first ones refer to the data transfer. Uh, as you see here is uh, data transfer in and uh, data transfer out. The uh, direction of the transfer is uh, relative to the backend component. So transfer in means the data that uh, enters into the backend components, and transfer out is the data that uh, uh, gets out of the backend component when the client uh, requests it. Then is the storage ratio. Uh, we should know that uh, uh, one bit of plain text data is uh, multiplied by a number of times when it's being processed in a homomorphic encryption uh, fashion. So uh, if this uh, storage ratio is, for example, 500, it means that uh, one bit of plain text data is being uh, multiplied uh, by uh, five times in order to uh, store it in an encrypted format. Then uh, is the uh, processing speed, which is defined as you see here, the number of the cipher texts, and uh, the very important uh, level L, which, which you understood. 
uh, and uh, this uh, this level L is essential as uh, if we don't manage it properly, our whole uh, homomorphic encryption process will uh, not work properly. And um, these are the performance metrics values that were obtained. Uh, as you see here, we have uh, considered uh, several uh, uh, data collection intervals. They range from uh, one minute uh, and go all the way up to 24 hours. And uh, the, on the first column, you see the load that is uh, placed on the 5G uh, data channel, which uh, uh, suggests that the 5G data channel is used in a scalable fashion. Uh, the most uh, load that has been registered is uh, 0.81, which is very good considering the amount of data. Then we have uh, the number of ciphertexts that are being uh, processed and the values of the level L and the amount of, uh, of data that has been transferred. Uh, we have uh, more data that's uh, been uh, sent out of the backend components. Um, the, the more uh, frequent the data collection intervals are. So that will be the explanation for this value. And finally, the storage ratio and uh, the processing speed on the last two columns. Uh, this, uh, the values of these uh, performance metrics suggest that uh, the system is uh, scalable. And uh, as we determined in practice, it was uh, capable to um, uh, correctly determine and assess all the, the implemented medical condition with uh, accuracy, with good accuracy. And uh, also uh, with uh, very good speeds from a client perspective. This means that uh, the greatest time that uh, uh, the process took from the client perspective or, uh, was at most uh, three or four uh, seconds, um, which is uh, a very good time, considering the complexity of uh, the homomorphic encryption operations that are performed uh, in the background. And uh, uh, one, uh, let's call it anecdotal remark, uh, considering the importance of uh, the level L, that uh, I've uh, discussed about. Uh, during uh, the, the early stages of the system's implementation, the value of this level was not properly calibrated. And uh, we had a situation when uh, a patient that uh, uh, has been wearing the Polar H10 uh, arrived in the uh, intensive uh, care unit due to some uh, medical, uh, medical condition. And uh, the data that was being uh, reported at that time suggested that uh, uh, he suffers, he was suffering from uh, uh, that uh, delayed repolarization syndrome, which was not actually the case. Uh, so the incorrect uh, calibration of the level uh, produces uh, very unexpected uh, results, especially when we speak about uh, personal medical data. And uh, this is as well uh, the performance uh, metrics values for uh, the detection of uh, delayed repolarization uh, syndrome. So uh, as far as, uh, as we know, uh, this system is one of the few uh, that uh, collects the medical data in this uh, way, and uh, it also um, uh, encrypts it end-to-end, uh, -end, so from the client devices to the server components and uh, backwards, uh, which ensures uh, absolute uh, data privacy in uh, almost any condition. The downside of the approach 
is uh, represented by the fact that uh, the homomorphic encryption operations are very uh, time consuming. And uh, uh, in the absence of a proper algorithmic optimization, we need uh, increasingly more powerful uh, hardware uh, uh, components in order to be able to sustain the, the implementation of such routines. Uh, therefore, there is a lot to do uh, in the coming years concerning uh, the time efficiency and computational efficiency of uh, the homomorphic uh, encryption routines. Uh, in essence, uh, this is what I uh, wanted to, uh, to present. And uh, I'm waiting uh, for your uh, questions. So, do we have questions in the audience? Yes. Thank you for your presentation. Very interesting. I have several que questions. So, in the end, uh, uh, what exactly uh, is the encryption scheme? So, uh, the, the encryption scheme uh, is uh, uh, for the uh, processing of the personal medical data is uh, that uh, homomorphic encryption uh, scheme which is based on uh, the operations that I enumerated. So it's homomorphic addition, homomorphic multiplication as the two basic operations that are uh, sustained by uh, the end and exclusive OR gates. And uh, uh, this is the scheme and for the uh, uh, transmission of uh, data synchronization uh, or state data through the system, we use uh, a standard uh, AES uh, encryption scheme. But for the processing of the, of the personal data is the homomorphic encryption. Okay. Yes, we have another question. <laughs> So I was curious, can you speak a little bit about why uh, you had to use those 5G net virtual network functions uh, instead of uh, um, uh, just a normal, let's say, HTTPS-based data transfer to get the data into the secure uh, storage? Uh, <clears throat> so uh, the, the 5G is, uh, represents only the physical layer which uh, allows us to implement uh, the data channels. For the transmission of the data, mainly in order to contact the server backend components, uh, of course, we use uh, secured data channels. And uh, the choice for uh, the 5G virtualized uh, channels was made because we wanted to see how such a system would couple with the transmission of the data through a virtualized 5G infrastructure, and uh, how uh, such an infrastructure would, uh, would simply uh, scale up with the, the amount of data. The initial version of the system uh, considered the uh, standard uh, data connections, such as uh, wireless connections, uh, 3G, 4G connections, but uh, this represents uh, another iteration of the research. Great. Uh, any other questions? Yes. Yes, we have a question. Good day. Thank you for the presentation. And you mentioned Nutro system. And, and uh, what for do you use it? Uh, do you think about making the encryption post quantum safe? Uh, we haven't uh, performed the relevant. Uh, research assessments concerning uh, the level of safety against uh, quantum uh, computers attacks. So uh, we, I cannot express with a sufficient degree of uh, relevance on how safe the model is for quantum computer-based attacks. But uh, uh, at least for uh, poorly implemented attacks, it should be pretty safe. 
Okay, uh, I've seen another hand raised over here someplace. Am I? Yeah, there. Oh, okay. So we've all, you've already uh, managed to answer two questions in one. So I think that's a great performance. Uh, <laughs> thank you so much uh, for your presentation.